Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the nuclear pore complex and how it regulates nuclear export and import. So the nuclear pore complex, or NPC, is vital in the regulation of the movement of things in and out of the nucleus. So not every molecule or every protein needs to be able to go into the nucleus. Okay? Only certain molecules need to be able to be imported into the nucleus, such as DNA polymerases, RNA polymerases, transcription factors, and so on and so forth. Um, cytosolic enzymes and so forth wouldn't need to go into the nucleus. So the nuclear pore complex, along with some other pieces we'll talk about, are vital in the regulation of those things into the nucleus. Likewise, if something gets into the nucleus, it ought to have a way to come out of the nucleus, and so the NPC is also vital in regulating export of some substances. All right, so first we're going to talk about nuclear import, but understand that both import and export are going to be heavily reliant on a G protein called RAN, which we'll get to eventually. All right, so if a protein needs to be imported into the nucleus, it's going to have what we call a nuclear localization sequence, also called NLS. And this is a sequence of amino acids that targets a protein into the nucleus. Okay, So here's an example nuclear localization sequence for the protein nucleoplasmin. This is a protein that will need to get into the nucleus, very much like DNA polymerase or transcription factors. And what you'll notice about this sequence of amino acids is that it's heavily saturated with the amino acid K, which is lysine. Okay? In fact, about half of these amino acids are lysines. Lysine is a basic amino acid that is positively charged at physiological pH. Um, you can also find arginines in here, but they're not as common as lysines. In fact, here's an arginine right here. But lysine is the most common. Now, the, the way the nuclear localization sequence works is because it's positively charged, it's able to bind to this protein called important. And important is named because it facilitates import into the nucleus. All right. So here's my important protein right here. It's going to bind to the NLS of a particular protein that needs to go into the nucleus. Let's say a transcription factor. And so that important NLS complex again, the NLS has the remainder of its protein with it, is going to move through the nuclear pore complex and into the nucleoplasm, which is basically the inside of the nucleus. The way the nuclear pore complex regulates this is only proteins that are bound to this important can be recognized by the nuclear pore complex. So if a protein does not have a nuclear localization sequence, it will not be bound to important and therefore it will not be going into the nucleus. All right, so once uh, this complex is in the nucleus, there's another protein right here called RAN. And RAN is a G protein, which means that it has to have bound GTP to function. And when RAN binds to important, that facilitates the displacement of the protein of interest. So the transcription factor with the NLS dissociates, or the DNA polymerase with the NLS dissociates, and then it functions inside the nucleus. But this RAN GTP then is now bound to this important. When this occurs, this facilitates the important to move back out into the cytoplasm, where eventually it will be able to pick up another protein and target it to the nucleus. Once the important and this RAN GTP move out into the cytoplasm, the RAN is going to internally hydrolyze its GTP. Okay. RAN is also an enzyme because it's able to hydrolyze GTP. And when GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP, the RAN dissociates from the important. And now the important is back out in the cytoplasm where it can freely accept another protein with another nuclear localization sequence. And so this cycle of binding to the NLS of a protein, moving it into the nucleus, then displacing the NLS for this RAN, movement back out into the cytosol with concomitant GTP hydrolysis, this is what allows continual protein import into the nucleus. All right. Now, moving over here to export. Export is the opposite process. Here we actually are going to have proteins that are going to be moved out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Okay, so if we have a protein such as a transcription factor, let's say, transcription factors do go into the nucleus, so they do actually have to have an NLS, but the transcription factor needs a way to get back out because transcription factors do not function permanently in the nucleus. Okay, 
So in order to get back out into the cytoplasm, those proteins have to have a nuclear export sequence, or NES, and this is not the Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay. And the NES is going to be heavily saturated with L amino acids. These are leucine, not lysine, leucine. Leucine is a branch chain amino acid. It's a hydrophobic amino acid, so very different in physical properties than lysine. And these X's mean that these amino acids are variable, but it has uh, pretty much this arrangement of leucines. And if a protein has a nuclear export sequence, then this sequence, particularly the leucines, are going to be able to bind to this protein called exportin. All right, now exportin is going to function in a slightly different way. So here's my protein that has my NES. That's going to target it to the cytoplasm so it can leave the nucleus. So in this case, both the protein with the NES and RAN-GTP are both going to, at the same time, bind to exportin. So here we have a complex of the exportin with the protein with the NES and RAN-GTP. And when this complex forms, it's able to move through the nuclear pore complex and out into the cytoplasm. Okay. Once this occurs, the RAN is going to perform its internal GTP hydrolysis activity, and that's going to result in GTP hydrolysis to GDP. When RAN has GDP, that inactivates it, and RAN dissociates, but that also allows the protein with the nuclear export sequence to dissociate from exportin as well. And so in this case, the GTP hydrolysis by RAN actually is going to facilitate um, the exportin and NES dissociation. Everything dissociates at the same time out here. Now the exportin can actually freely move back through the nuclear pore complex and back into the nucleus, where it can pick up another protein that needs to be moved out into the cytoplasm. But again, the way that this is regulated by the nuclear pore complex is only proteins in the nucleus that have an NES are going to be able to move back out into the cytoplasm because they have to bind to exportin and the nuclear pore complex is what recognizes exportin. So just some random protein in here that doesn't have an NES will not bind exportin and therefore will not be moved back out, although that's not very common. It's more common for a protein to not have an NLS very common for a protein to have an NES because if something goes into the nucleus, it really needs a way to get back out. Okay? All right, so hopefully this process makes sense to you and you got a good understanding now of nuclear export and nuclear import and how they relate to the NLS and NES. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.